Steven, Brandon. Me too. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice you met the, the right stream. Yeah, uh, so here. That's that's perfect. Sorry for the technical issues we had. And we directly go on because time is, is going on. I'd like to introduce you shortly, Brandon Collins from makepass.com. And uh, yeah, Brandon has really long term experience as a GIS developer and worked with the Nature Convergency, NASA, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So quite a lot of experience, I think. And today is a core developer of the data shader and book it open source libraries. And um, he's going to talk ab about a multidisciplinary exploration of Phos4G. So I have to get your, s maybe you share your slides so I can get them on the screen and then I disappear and it's your stage. Great, Till, are you able to see my first slide here? Um, just the present, the introduction slide? We see it. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. This is great. Um, so my name is Brennan Collins. Um, really happy to be here at Phos4G Argentina. Uh, the um, we're going to be talking about um, you know multidisciplinary nature of GIS and a couple of caveats about this presentation just to prep folks. Um, this is a somewhat Python centric presentation. We focus a lot on open source Python for Geo at MakePath. And the point of this presentation is to introduce you to some tools which are adjacent to, you know, spatial data science and GIS, um, which can augment your toolbox uh, that you should know about. These are somewhat Python centric, just to reiterate that. Um, we work a lot on raster analysis tools. So I'm also going to be doing a deep dive into some of the dependencies that we use that aren't specifically in the geo space. But you should know about them because they can uh, they can help you in in your analysis. Um, and in general, I'm hoping that folks will leave with uh, some new libraries to check out and um, fresh tools as you, you know, go back to your your daily work next week. Um, really, you know, it's really great to be able to present uh, virtually. I am sorry that I can't be there in person. I actually do have a personal connection to Buenos Aires and the Argentina area, which is that I graduated high school in the town of Necochea, which is in the, the Provincia de Buenos Aires, from a Colegio Nacional. So it's really special for me to be um, putting together two things here, which is one presenting to uh, folks um, in Argentina and also around the world, um, and then also talking about my passion, which is around uh, open source geo with Python. Um, so my name is, is Brennan Collins. You can find me on GitHub. I've been working in open source Python tools for about the last decade. And uh, you may uh, have used some of the tools that we contribute to at MakePath, um, in particular, Data Shader um, and Bokeh. Um, also, uh, X-Ray Spatial is the tool that I'm going to be going uh, deep into to look at some of the dependencies here that aren't specifically geo libraries, but really help uh, to achieve our goals. Um, I'm also the, the co-founder and principal at MakePath, which is a spatial data science firm based in Austin, Texas. And we uh, help uh, partners leverage open source software to uh, solve complex challenges, both in the geospatial space and in general data science and machine learning. Uh, we are hiring right now. And um, so if you go over to makepath.com forward slash careers, you can see some of the open positions that we have. And we hire from the open source community and we're a fully remote team. So um, this is not just US specific. If you do see something that's interesting there, I'd, I'd encourage you to go over also to the MakePath blog and see some of the projects that, uh, that we're currently working on and some of the um, open source work that we're doing, for instance, a recent Bokeh release, which is a uh, interactive visualization tool for Python. And one of the blog posts you would see um, on the MakePath blog is actually our um, history of open source GIS infographic. Um, this infographic uh, lists out some of the, the really influential open source libraries for Geo um, over the past 30 years. And as I look through a lot of these libraries, I see that some are not specifically geo, even though they've had major impacts on geo. Some of those include um, HDF and NetCDF, 
NumPy, Pandas, some of these, these libraries that have a big influence on Geo, but didn't necessarily come from uh, the, the GIS community or the, the geospatial community. Uh, the, our infographic is itself open source. So if you see something that you think is missing or a new library that you'd like to put on there, please go over to um, GitHub and you can actually submit a pull request to change the infographic to add in um, additional content there. Today, I'm gonna be talking about multidisciplinary GIS in the in the um, in the context of X-ray spatial, which is a toolbox for raster analysis. So we are taking what we're doing here is we're looking at general computer science and Python and saying how can we take tools and apply them to geo and name them in ways that geo professionals would would recognize. Um, this project fell out or grew out of the data shader project, which um, is a non geo library, but it's, it's main purpose is for fast rasterization. And the intent of X ray spatial is to provide a extensible, um, but also performant library open source library for raster analytics in Python. And what we're trying to do is balance the ability of an individual um, analyst to extend the tools while also not losing the performance of um, tools like um, GDAL and GEOS, which, which form uh, an amazing foundation for, uh, for you know, geoprocessing within uh, many programming languages, not just Python. But in this case, what we're doing is we're trying to stay within Python so we have a common uh, analysis language, but then uh, be able to extend the tools to scale to large, potentially larger problems. So scaling is central to what we're doing in X-ray spatial for raster processing. And we're pulling ideas from adjacent disciplines to enable scaling for geo. So there's two components that we see as important when we think of scaling, when we're taking our existing tools and making them work on larger problems. So there's really two sides to this. There's one, which is um, finding uh, ways to make algorithms faster. And that's what we refer to as vertical scaling. And then also being able to take algorithms and run them um, in multi-thread, multi-core, and multi-machine or cluster environments. And that's our horizontal scaling. And to achieve this for geo within the X-ray spatial context of raster processing, we're looking outside the group think of open source geo and finding tools um, that span you know, different use cases, but then taking them and applying them to geo. Uh, as I mentioned, X-Ray Spatial um, came out of the Data Shader project. Data Shader, while it has some really great geo applications, is not geo specific. What it is is a staged rasterization pipeline that allows you to deal with problems like oversaturation and overplotting when uh, trying to visualize large amounts of data. And we're looking at a geo example here of plotting. Um, 300 million points. This is one point per person in the United States. But there aren't things like projections. There aren't um, functions specifically named for geo professionals inside of Data Shader. And that's really why X-ray Spatial was started, was to take concepts um, in scaling and rasterization and then add um, tools that geos geospatial professionals would, would expect within a raster library. So um, to get started here in X-ray Spatial, um, you can scroll down. This is the, the GitHub page for X-ray Spatial. And you can see some of the uh, areas that we want to address um, it, with four geospatial professionals using tools that um, may not uh, be within you know, their, their normal purview. So classic 1D classification tools, focal analytics, um, multi-spectral analysis and doing different band math on Landsat and Sentinel data, pathfinding and proximity tools, and then surface analytic tools, zonal tools, and local tools. So this is a, um, as we think about the major areas of raster processing, we can um, map those onto different modules in X-ray spatial, and we're building out different use cases, um, which uh, are you know, in our opinion, could be niches that could be filled for geo 
um, data analytics. So this includes being able to run um, on clusters and being able to run on modern hardware like NVIDIA GPUs. And that's so as we look through some of the features inside of X-ray Spatial, we'll see that um, some some tools are supported across clusters, which would be the Dask scenario. And we're going to talk a little bit about Dask. And then other tools are also supported um, on Kupai, which would be the GPU case. To be able to um, scale these geospatial tools, we have tons of dependencies. Um, we're building on top of some really interesting projects like NumPy and Numba, Dask, and Pandas. These libraries are not geospecific. But when we um, package them up together, we can make some really nice tools that uh, speak to geo professionals. And that's where X-ray spatial comes in. Um, here in this, uh, in this graph, um, in yellow, we can see some other tools which aren't specific dependencies, but um, interoperate with X-ray spatial via other dependencies. So primarily, I'm going to be talking about Numba, which was made for uh, creating fast Python code. Dask for scaling out um, Python onto clusters, and then also Pandas for attribute management and a little history of NumPy. So NumPy um, came out of the biomedical imaging discipline and was created by Travis Oliphant at the Mayo Clinic. And what it gave us was a data structure for Python that was performant. So what we get out of NumPy, right, is our um, multi-dimensional array along with a set of universal functions on top of that array object. As we scroll down the page, we can see that NumPy comes into play in tons of different disciplines. And that means that by using NumPy as a dependency, we can pull a lot of different libraries in that may not, you know, you may not think of traditionally in the, in the geo realm, but we can learn from these tools and uh, borrow from these tools uh, and also gain, you know, being downstream from, say, NumPy enhancements that were added for signal processing, but we can be downstream of that and gain those benefits for geoprocessing. Uh, there was a lot of different applications of NumPy, and um, SciPy grew out of NumPy to be domain-specific tools that use NumPy. And there are some spatial extensions here within um, the, uh, the SciPy project, but it's another uh, tool that is adjacent to Geo, which has impact on Geo. We have a, um, some really nice stats tools in here, and also there's plotting tools and um, uh, things like even um, spatial indexing tools that get even closer to the Geo space. Um, folks from the finance domain came along and said, hey, I really like NumPy. Um, what we need is to take these NumPy arrays and organize them into a data structure which data analysts are, are comfortable with. The, uh, the classic um, data analysis environment um, would be something like Excel. So the Excel worksheet, which uh, takes rows and columns of data and allows you to do analysis on them, is represented well within the, the pandas data frame. A lot was also borrowed from R. So uh, there's areas that geo folks are good at and areas that um, finance people are good at. One, one area that the finance area is great at are date times. So um, you know if you're a quantitative trader, you really care about getting date times right and they can be uh, surprisingly difficult. So it's really nice to have a discipline like finance um, build a uh, data structure with good date time support that can then be extended with a geometry field so that we can uh, represent, say, something like a shapefile or a geo package in, in memory as uh, a pandas data frame. So what it ends up being a pandas data frame is a um, set of NumPy arrays that are labeled as columns. Um, and then geo pandas uh, does the, the great work of adding in a geometry column. So it's taking a tool from that was originally uh, made for biomedical imaging, NumPy, combining it um, with for business applications with pandas in the finance world, and then adding in a geometry column. And we have a, uh, a really, really great uh, project here, GeoPandas, which I'm, I'm sure that there's other presentations about and many of you may have used in the past. 
um, within X-ray spatial and um, uh, within the larger Python ecosystem, Numba has been a particularly helpful library because it can allow us to write performant Python code um, without the need to say delegate to like a C extension or wrapping a C++ library. So Numba is within X-ray spatial as we think about um, raster operations like view shed and proximity analysis and zonal statistics. We can use a library like Numba to speed up all of those operations, um, which would address the vertical scaling component of um, X-ray spatial. So within X-ray spatial, what we're doing is we're combining these tools like NumPy and Pandas and Numba to um, uh, write functions specific for the geo community. And similar, similar to um, how Pandas wrapped up NumPy arrays and added labels to them, um, X-Array is a library which wraps NumPy arrays and gives us n-dimensional labeling. And this means we have a really nice container for storing um, geospatial raster data in memory. So X-Array um, allows us to have many different layers organized inside of an X-Array data set or an X-Array data array, depending on, on what you're using. Um, and it has a memory model that mirrors NetCDF so that we can easily write this format to um, uh, really you know, open standards and uh, interoperable standards like HDF and NetCDF. Within X-Array Spatial to address um, uh, scaling to clusters, we look at a tool called Dask. And Dask will allow us to stay within Python, but um, be able to use data structures which can scale across multi-machines and multiple cores. So in the same way that um, Pandas wrapped up NumPy arrays and labeled them for the finance uh, industry, um, Dask um, provides a uh, a Dask array and also a Dask data frame, which mirror NumPy APIs and Pandas APIs, but partitions those data structures so that work can be done on multiple partitions at the same time. And that work could happen in a cluster environment where we have, say, a thousand different um, computers coordinated to work on a single problem, but it can also work on a single machine scenario where if you are, say, wanting to use all the cores on your machine, then Dask is a really good library to look at uh, to be able to uh, scale your Python code. So this is not a specific, specifically a geo library, but it is one that can be applied to geo to um, solve horizontal scaling issues. Now these two libraries, Dask and GeoPandas have now come together. So I just wanted to also plug um, Dask GeoPandas, which is a combination of the Dask library and the GeoPandas library to give us a GeoPandas geo data frame. So that would be a data frame with a geometry column that can be partitioned and can be uh, used in a uh, multi-machine or multi-core context. So this is um, still an experimental library, but it has uh, uh, some really nice features in it. And we decided to go ahead and use Dask GeoPandas to create a, um, a small project called Census Parquet. So within the United States, we recently had a decennial census and that data is, has been coming out over the past maybe six weeks. Um, and what Census Parquet is, is a library for um, uh, processing census shape files into Parquet files. So as we scale, um, data access is one of the areas that we need to scale for geo. And we can look outside of traditional geo formats like shape files and geo packages and look at Parquet. This is an example of using Dask GeoPandas to create Parquet files for Census 2020. So we've open sourced this now and folks can go over and, and grab this and uh, create your Parquet files. Just as a primer, right? And this is not specific to Geo, but um, good data formats for scaling um, usually uh, have kind of four different aspects and Parquet meets all of these aspects. So let's just mention them briefly which are that we're looking for binary uh, file formats that store our data by columns so that we can read just subselections of the data that also support um, interesting compression methods. So in this case, we tend to use uh, the snappy compression method just so that we can uh, um, optimize for IO as opposed to disk space. 
And then there's a fourth thing that you can partition them so that we can take a Parquet file, we can put it in the cloud, and we can read partitions uh, directly from the cloud um, based on a, a spatial context or based on an attribute uh, query. So um, another library that's adjacent to GIS would be uh, KuPy. So KuPy uh, implements the NumPy API, but on top of NVIDIA GPUs. So this is a, the, one of the dependencies we use inside of X-ray Spatial, not from Geo, but that helps us scale um, processing so that we can use modern hardware for compute intensive problems. So KuPy is a, is a really interesting library which um, gives you a NumPy-like array um, and compatible syntax, but that is allocated on top of a, of a GPU so you can you know, benefit from the, uh, from the performance increases there for compute intensive problems. We recently, um, actually just today, released a library called RTXPy. And what RTXPy does is it connects Python to CUDA, CUDA ray tracing. Um, this is uh, being integrated into X-ray Spatial right now to give us accelerated view shed so that we can do fast uh, line of sight calculations using uh, more recent CUDA APIs. Let's we'll check out RTXPy. And within our view shed, what we were able to do was we took the view shed inside of X-ray Spatial, which is based on NumPy and has Numba optimizations in it. Um, and using the GPU version, we were able to get about a 300x improvement on doing um, view shed analysis on a, um, uh, a 2,000 by 4,000 size grid. So this is where um, the, the modern hardware really takes off, where we have GPUs that were designed to uh, specifically do ray tracing. So we can take general purpose ray tracing and apply it to view shed so that uh, it can be used in um, geo applications and um, uh, without having to go too deep into CUDA APIs. So just back to X-ray spatial. So the tools that I've been talking about here, which have been um, adjacent to uh, GIS, but have been wrapped together inside of X-ray spatial to provide um, GIS named functions for raster analysis. Um, you can find examples at uh, X-ray spatial in the examples directory. And here I'm looking at the user guide where we have a set of notebooks that's continually being added to and expanded, but address a lot of these geospatial areas using these tools, which are adjacent to the geospace, but within Python. Um, really quick um, for those uh, um, developers out there that are comfortable at looking at code. I mean, look at a quick example of using num Numba. So here within X-ray Spatial, this is the type of source code that you'd be able to read if you wanted, all you wanted to do was just see how, how you can use Numba to speed up raster operations. You may wanna take a, take a look at the horn slope implementation. So here using Numba, we can take Python code for a slope calculation, and this is targeting a CPU, and um, we can change the decorator and uh, just some small modifications, and we can have this code target a GPU. Or we can um, wrap the code and we can have it address a uh, dask array and handle things like the edge cases of overlapping partitions um, to be able to scale this to say a dask cluster or a um, uh, out of core operation where you can't fit all the mem all of your data in memory, but you want to do a slope calculation. So um, you know all you do is you can uh, clone the repo or you can install um, X-ray Spatial via pip or conda, and then um, cop you have um, some CLI commands to copy out these examples, and you can walk through um, the examples to see. Um, how to use X-ray Spatial, and then you can go deeper into the source code for X-ray Spatial to see how exactly we're using Numba and KuPy and Dask uh, to to achieve these these tools that we have here. So we have some uh, just a, a quick look at some of these notebooks that you can get started on. Um, we're always looking for for contributors to X-ray Spatial, and um, I would just encourage everyone to get involved in an open source project if you're not already involved in one. Um, if you're not a uh, you know, if you don't love coding or you're intimidated by coding, I'm intimidated by new open source projects that I start in. I usually start with documentation and testing, and that can be um, uh, really helpful to the project. 
while you ramp up on the uh, on the code base. Um, but just wanted to um, mention again that we are hiring at MakePath and we're a global company. We um, uh, are looking specifically for folks that have a passion for open source, which is why I say this again, this is a great, great community for that. So please uh, feel free to reach out to me on, um, uh, on GitHub or also uh, by email here and uh, would love to chat um, sometime soon. But just wanted to, to thank everyone for participating and I'm happy to take uh, questions about uh, the content here or um, about Negochea or anything. But thank you guys. Thank you, Brandon, for your talk. Um, really great, great things. Um, I noted some some things because uh, I, I think you, your talk really made me happy because um, uh, probably, I don't know whether you know, but we, we work in catching up on really similar problems with the company of Mondialis where, for instance, Marcus Nittler is uh, involved and to put a grass GS behind a cloud-based inf infrastructure. But uh, yeah, I think it could have been better to have some colleagues of mine here. They probably could have asked better questions than I can do. But um, what really I'm interested in is because we, as I said, we, we're working on this um, part of software, which is an open source community project now. It's called Actinia. And uh, what is your experience? How is the acceptance from other companies or users when using your software stack? Um, are there many users? Uh, how, or is it just based in your company? And that that would be, I think, probably interesting for for the audience. Yeah, we have um, certainly have um, uh, users outside of MakePath. Um, some of these projects are very new, and so they're they're um, uh, still being developed. Make uh, X-ray Spatial has not hit a 1.0 release yet, um, but we are uh, getting close to that as we fill out our feature matrix to have kind of full cluster and GPU support for the, the functions that we're targeting. I love open source because I, we can connect with anybody um, over these tools and uh, companies are continually uh, very open to hearing presentations about free tools that they can use and, um, uh, and benefit from. So I find that, that open source is really what ties MakePath together because we can connect to all these different disciplines and um, different companies on what is like somewhat of a neutral ground of all you know committing to projects with open licenses and we're constantly learning from other companies and um, just really thankful to be part of the Python community and also part of the larger you know uh, GIS for data science. Okay, Brenton, I think. Get your kudos in the chat. And uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, due to the schedule, we have half an hour break now. So I would just um, uh, put it, put everything down for half an hour. And afterwards, we hear the last presentation in this session, which is from Jennifer Bailey. But um, yeah, as mentioned, we have a break half an hour now. And we see you in a minute or in 30 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brandon.